Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this week I'm obsessed with Robin Ford. I can't get enough of him. Um, I think I want to marry him and have his babies. Uh, I can't stop watching, what was it? Robin Ford Live Rock Palace 2007. Do yourself a favour and you Google that, or YouTube it, sorry. Robin Ford Live Rock Palace 2007. Oh, he just drips class, doesn't he? He just comes on with the red three, three, five, and you think, oh, we're in for a good one. And he's just, he's just awesome. So that, I didn't steal any of his licks for that tonight, but you can tell if you're into Robin Ford, there's definite concepts that I, I pinched um, in making that track tonight. So do watch that. Um, anyway, let's look at some of the playing tips that are relevant to tonight's little jam. This first one I will call lick trails because I can't think of a better word for it. The way the player lets the lick trail away at the end as a kind of very casual So the main statement of the lick is made, but then at the end the player throws in this completely unnecessary but gorgeous little tumble down off the lick, just to let off steam. Here, have a little bit of magic dust, and it's just great. So you've heard me do things like, that or I started this song with that was unnecessary but nice all the same or that was unnecessary but great I love all that stuff and of course what that actually is slowed down would be but my pick starts off the first two or three notes like so plucked, plucked, hammer off, plucked, and then this hand now goes on holiday. In fact, you could probably do even less with the right hand. See that? That was just what was that couple of notes from my pick? You get the picture. By the way, I would think the secret to great guitar playing, to go fast, sound fast, is to slow your brain, is to sl slow it down. I could have rushed that. My, the human in me wants to rush all these licks. But because I'm quite experienced now, <clears throat> I deliberately slow down one or two miles an hour. Just get it right, Paul, get it right. Don't get it fast, get it right. And if you can just slow yourself down, and even for a laugh, think, what would happen if I just played it like really slow? It's the best take yet. It's the best one when you record it, when you play it, the playback. It's relaxing. It's the secret of all guitar playing that's fast, I think. That's a sidebar. The next one is what I'll call jazzy notes. Putting in notes that sound a bit wrong. I'm quite new at this. And I struggled with a couple of these because I played them to my wife. I was so good at recording the first take. I played it to my wife and my wife went, and it blew my confidence. And I just spent hours listening to Robin Ford screw in my ear, thinking, whoa, where are these notes coming from? But it's great, man. I try it, play it to my wife and she goes, but then the good news is she does that with Robin Ford as well. So I'm thinking, sorry, Rachel, but we're just gonna ignore you on this, right? I'm gonna, I'm right. So, what I mean by is this, right? Things like, we're in G. Check this out. I love that. I hope you do too. <laughs> I'm not sure. None of that I stole off Robin Ford, but that's the kind of thing he does.
So I like that. That kind of stuff is all over Robin Ford's playing and it just sets me on fire every time I hear it because it does jar. It's like, whoa, what are you doing? Oh my, oh, can I hear that again? That was great. And he plays it with such confidence. I'm trying to think how could I explain it. You might hate it, so therefore skip this bit of the video, but if you think it's actually quite interesting, Paul, it's really intriguing to put that into my humdrum solo. When you're busy going... <laughs> you could do with some fresh blood, you're looking at things like... So, I think what it is, I think jazzers call it tension and release. So they, and it seems to revolve around semitones, they almost play a normal lick. One semitone too high, just to screw with you. I'm just joking. And then they come back and you're released again. And then they go, so don't do that. Oh, that's okay. But the overall effect is great. But, you know, you have to, to try. I'm just new at this. I'm going to be listening a lot to Robin Ford. So expect to hear a lot of bum notes in forthcoming videos. <laughs> anyway. The next one I can only describe as like little marching runs. Runs that suddenly go, I'm off. Somebody carries the baton and the, the run the lick just goes. And a very military style and that every but every note is in a conformed musical timing there's no flair whatsoever zero flair military timing and it juxtaposes the beat of the song here's what i mean i'm going to play the backing track and i'm going to put in firstly intuitive phrasing right here's my intuitive phrasing Here you go. the marching phrasing. I'll start and choose and then I'll go to marching. See that? That's the phrasing. Back to intuitive. There we go. Right. What I mean, and, and that's what I mean. Here's it in context with actual licks. I'm just going to do nothing but marching licks. Watch this. I mean so you're going from intuitive bouncy stuff with the beat and suddenly you think stuff this <laughs> and it just whoa explodes again Robin Ford's full of that stuff it just creates interest and again the secret is slowing down because the human in you wants to go <laughs> oh fuck you know doesn't it work so just think no nah, I'm a military robot. And it works. It takes a bit of practice. The licks itself, by the way, were just little patterns. My favourite lick, which you've heard me play many times, that I put into various things, is this. Uh, that type of stuff. favourite is just little blue stuff but that's not the point it's the military every beat must be exactly the same and it really creates interest hope you agree the next one is just unusual phrasing and sometimes it works just through having stock licks in your library that you rely on that didn't really fit but you stick them in anyway, and when you listen to the playback, you think, actually, with a tweak, that just comes across as interesting because it doesn't really fit. 
and it eventually becomes part of your playing and I, I like to think I've got quite unusual phrasing sometimes. For example, let me play about three or four licks in a row that are from this track that I think demonstrate unusual phrasing. Let's go. unusual. It, it's outside the normal. It's outside of that and I'm always trying to break away from that stuff that we all get guilty of getting sucked into all the time. So what did I do? I, as I say, I just put stop licks that are in my library and I just for a laugh when I'm creating these jams I just think what would what, I go through my wee filing cabinet in my head of licks let's pull out that one today let's take that one out oh god that sucks put that one straight back and I just go through and I think oh, that actually came across as interesting plus the more you do that it just becomes part of your who you are and, and you're playing um what did I do there anything of any interest not really it's just the way I did it a great link though to learn is I think it's one of mine. I think I pinched bits of it from Arvin Roth way back in the old days, but I love to do this. Or whatever, that's all based on that. Augmented shape. Copy of me if you, copy me if you want, because I copied it from somebody else probably. Right, I've babbled on enough now. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.